What's going on internet? IG here again today with another Linux distro review. Today we're going to be checking out the enterprise version of Red Hat's distribution, also known as Cent OS 7. So CentOS is essentially the enterprise offering for Red Hat's Linux distribution. However, it is not branded with Red Hat in any way, although it is provided by the Red Hat community. Essentially, it is a community-driven distribution that is based on the efforts of the Red Hat Enterprise Linux distribution. So what are some key things to look for? Well, stability is gonna be a big one. Also, how long is this distribution going to be maintained for? So how long will people be able to run it on their systems? And also, what kind of desktop environments do they have available? Well, to answer those questions really quickly, CentOS is very, very, very stable. That's really all that needs to be said. It's also going to be maintained for quite some time, but I'm going to talk about that in a bit. And also it has pretty much every desktop environment out there supported uh, in its DVD releases. And then it has a couple of live DVD releases as well in both the KDE and GNOME desktops and a couple of others as well. But right now, let's dig into the GNOME desktop or the GNOME desktop, because for me, I was very interested to see what vanilla GNOME looks like in a very, very, very stable environment. So let's check it out. So this is CentOS 7, the GNOME edition, and I've logged in in classic mode as this is the default mode that it'll boot from. At least that's been my experience. Now this is the 64-bit ISO and it hasn't been updated to what the current application set is. And to be honest, they're actually quite, there is quite a bit of value in updating and uh, uh, upgrading all the packages in the distribution from when you first install. But as this is what you are going to get when you install it for the first time, that's what I'm going to be looking at today. Now the first thing I really need to mention is the install process itself because unfortunately it wasn't as smooth as it could have been. It is based on the Fedora installer from Fedora 17 or 18 I believe and unfortunately that version of Anaconda isn't the most user friendly out there. Uh, it has quite a few options that are hidden under uh, more simple options and the more careless user could end up doing something quite damaging to their system. So moral to the story, if you're not quite familiar with Linux or how it works or how an installer works, then I definitely recommend that you steer clear of the CentOS 7 installer or at least find somebody else who can install it for you. But once you're installed and up and running with, Cent with CentOS 7, then you start to see some of the benefits. The primary benefit of running CentOS is the stability. This desktop is going to be supported for a long, long time. I'm talking like 10 years. So this distribution is something that you're going to be able to install on a system or a server and keep it running for quite a long time. It's going to keep chugging away and you're going to be not forced to upgrade or update the distribution unless you really want to. Now, as you can see, this is the core edition of CentOS Linux 7. And as I mentioned before, it is based on Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7 as well. It is a community driven distribution. So you're not gonna have Red Hat as a company dictating what happens with this distribution. But of course, the community's efforts is largely based on what Red Hat Linux as a company does. So as far as specs go of the CentOS 7 Linux distribution, you have the Linux kernel 3.10.0 out of the box available on the distribution, which obviously is an older kernel, but as with all of the software in this distribution, it's going to be an older revision for the sake of stability. As far as your compiler and toolchain are concerned, you've got GCC 4.8.2. And as far as desktop UI goes, you have GNOME 3.8 and KDE 4.10 by default. The graphic stack is Xorg 7.7 .7, and out of the box you come with version 4.14 of LibreOffice and version 24 of Firefox. Now out of the box you aren't going to get any third party software or codecs, you're going to have to go and hunt them down yourself. Now as of the current time most RPM based distributions or Fedora based distributions, anything associated with Red Hat usually uses the RPM Forge repositories to enable things like Flash and MP3 playback. At the current time they do not have a repository yet for CentOS 7. They are working on it and it won't be long before they do. But it is something to keep in mind if you're planning on using this distribution as your everyday machine as of the time of the release of this video. Of course, this isn't going to be a problem once they do get it up and running because those repos will be available for quite some time. All right, with all of those ground rules out of the way, let's get down to actually what this desktop environment has to offer. To be honest, the reason I started with all the other stuff first is because there really isn't much to note here in the GNOME desktop because it is as vanilla GNOME as you are ever going to get on a Linux desktop. This can be both a good thing or a bad thing depending on your own personal preference. For me, I am not the biggest fan of GNOME. 
Uh, having said that, I was interested to see what vanilla GNOME looked like nowadays, and especially in a stable form, as I have tried GNOME in the past, but usually it hasn't been the most stable performer for me out there. But GNOME 3.8 did come out a couple of years ago now, and so it's definitely had time to mature, and while it does still kind of make sense, basically I can't really get over GNOME's simplicity. It's excellent for a new user, but for users that are going to be using a distribution like CentOS 7, I kind of get the feeling that new users is not exactly their target audience. Having said that, CentOS is more about the core of the system rather than the desktop environment that they have to offer out of the box. So if you are interested in what CentOS has to offer as a distribution, in terms of the stability, the developing environment, and also the stable structure that it can give you for a lot of IT and network admin type stuff, then I think you'll find a lot to like here. But as an everyday desktop user, I do definitely not recommend CentOS 7. For starters, the software management tool that they bundle in by default is not really the most helpful, as you really need to know what you're looking for and be able to use that in a search term. They do have package collections there available, but they're clunky and they don't really work as well as they should. As far as adding repositories goes for third-party software, again, that's something you'll need to be doing on the command line, along with most of your other updating and other system maintenance. So if you know what you're doing on the command line, then you're gonna feel right at home here. And the rewards are that it is very fast, very speedy, and very efficient. But if you're new to Linux, or you've only been in the Linux world for a little while, then it's probably better if you steer clear and maybe try out something like Fedora, as it will give you a very similar idea and a very similar feel, but without the complexity. As far as GNOME itself goes, we've got an interesting smattering of applications here, and you really get a nice idea of what the GNOME suite offers nowadays. As all of these applications, bar the Firefox web browser, are all pretty unique to the GNOME project. A lot of this software is quality software, and it belongs on a Hall of Fame list of open source apps, including Cheese, Empathy, Evolution, Gedit, Rhythmbox, Shotwell, all of those are quality applications, and I'm glad to see their inclusion here. Unfortunately, the missing codex and the missing Flash player for the Firefox web browser is a little bit of a downer for desktop use, as those things are pretty necessary nowadays. Of course, enabling a repo isn't that hard, but as of the current time, it is a little bit tricky as those repos don't necessarily exist yet. Of course, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but I wasn't able to find an RPM Forge or Repo Forge, I think it's been ported to now. The folder inclusion in GNOME Activities is a nice way to group all of those applications that you hardly ever use. And when it comes to system resources, uh, CentOS is a bit of a champ in this regard. From a cold boot, I was logging around 400 megs of RAM, and I've loaded a few things up and played around with a few things, so it's idling at 700, which obviously isn't the most ideal, and also we are chugging through quite a bit of CPU. This isn't a virtual box, I might add, but on native hardware, it seems to be relatively slim when it comes to the amount of resources that it uses. Of course, the system monitor says otherwise at the moment, so I guess you take what I say with a grain of salt. Overall, I have one recommendation and two anti-recommendations. The one recommendation is that if you are looking for a distribution that is stable, that is supported, that is going to be provided for by a company and by the community for more than a decade, and you are familiar with the way that Red Hat Linux works and you need to be able to integrate well into a Red Hat Enterprise or Red Hat Linux world, then I definitely recommend CentOS. For the desktop user and for somebody who likes using GNOME or used to like using GNOME, I would say probably steer clear of this one. It has a lot to offer Linux professionals, Linux enthusiasts and Linux developers, but there's not really too much to see here as far as the desktop user is concerned. Of course, this might not be as in-depth as you were wanting, so feel free to leave any questions down in the comments below. But as far as me as a reviewer goes, I like to look at things from the desktop user's perspective. And while CentOS does provide stability, there are quite a few mountains that you have to navigate over to enjoy the rewards of that stability. So in the end, not bad, but I think the desktop user could do better. As always, if you like this video, then definitely give it a thumbs up because it helps out the channel. And if you like this content on a regular basis, then click subscribe in one of those corners. I can't really remember which one. There'll be a little IG thing that you can hit and you can subscribe to the channel. Thank you all for watching. And whether you subscribe today or you subscribed years ago, I really appreciate all of the support that you guys keep bringing and all of the comments and interaction that we can have over free software. Keep the suggestions coming on Facebook, Twitter, or Google+, and I will catch you all next time. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen.